to it. Thursday the 6th of July, 6 p.m. local time. Just arrived at JFK Airport in New York. Friday now. You woke up quite early this morning just exploring Central Park. I walked up the east side around the Jacqueline and Kennedy Reservoir to the west side, where I walked past the American Museum of Natural History, the peculiar VIA 57 Western Hell's Kitchen, and Trump Tower before grabbing a bite to eat and finally arriving in Times Square. A whistle stop tour of New York ensued. From Times Square, I headed to the Empire State Building, continued on to Madison Square Park, then to Union Square Market within Union Square Park followed by a 30-minute walk to the New York State Supreme Court and the neighbouring City Hall Park. Next was a quick visit to Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange, Battery Park from where one can see the Statue of Liberty, then back around to the 9-11 Memorial and onto Brooklyn Bridge to, you can guess it, Brooklyn, where I walked down the coastline, seeing a gorgeous sunset lit silhouette of the Manhattan skyline forming the backdrop of a glistening East River and finally arriving at my accommodation in Queens. Your third day in the United States, and now in Boston. In the park, a presumably public baseball area with the bleachers at the back. It's like I'm living my high school American experience. As the weather was fantastic, I simply walked around aimlessly for the rest of the day, admiring the parks, rivers, and buildings, once again ending the day on a skyscraper-lit river backdrop. Second day in Boston and the first stop of the Freedom Trail, Boston Common, founded in 1634 as America's first public park. The second stop founded in 1798, the Massachusetts Senate House, Park Street Church, and then right next to it, number four, the Granbury Ferry. Next is King's Chapel, and right next to it, King's Burial Ground, the School of the United States. At the end of that street was the old corner bookstore, now a Chipotle that you can see in the background. And then on the other side was the old South Meeting House, where taxes against the British, specifically the tea tax, were negotiated. The old State House, and in that alleyway, the site of the Boston Massacre. A little bit of walk away, but behind me now is the Paul Revere house, the last remaining house from the 17th century in Boston, part of the Italian part of Boston at the Old North Church. Just down the road, Cox Hill Burial Ground. At the penultimate stop, the USS Constitution, the final stop on the Freedom Trail, Bunker Monument. Which I climbed to get this great view of Boston, and then had dinner with Joel, a friend from school and an economist at Harvard. Good morning, Adrian, your third and final day in Boston. This time exploring Harvard a little more as you explored a little bit with Joel last night, but it's the second best university in Cambridge, of course, after the original. Hello, Adrito. Here we are in Grand Central Station, NYC. We saw the whole statue of Liberty for the water. And yesterday we saw the whole skyline and sunset. Which I'm after hanging out with Stephen and Ellie, mathematician friends from Peterhouse Cambridge, who happened to be visiting New York at the end of their orchestra tour, I went for the classic American movie experience, watching Incredibles 2 in the Theatre District. Wednesday the 11th of July, we went to an historic media place where you saw the moon landing, the original 9-11 broadcasting, Churchill's Beatrice speech, and then in that same centre, later on, we watched the England match, which now we are at the High Line, which is the area of New York, and um, we to the old subway station, and the green area, as you see, the high line, it's just like, very nice to it. Even the Drito, it's Thursday the 12th of July 2018, and your first day in Chicago. You're currently at the Navy Pier with the sea behind you, and of course, Chicago behind you as well. You arrived from New York this afternoon and met up with Cameron, although he's gone for dinner with his family, and you're just exploring the city. The real tourism will start tomorrow. Your second day in Chicago at the Planetarium with the statue of Copernicus right there. In the morning, we went to the Stock Exchange the center of Chicago, and now Cameron's at the Art Institute, but instead I thought I would look around the park, go to possibly the Food Market Festival, and just explore the rest of what Chicago has to offer. Hey, Drito, we're in Chicago, uh, in Millennium Park, right in the city center. We're currently standing next to the Bean. You get a great view of us and the rest of the city behind us. He then went on a tour at the Frank Lloyd Wright Home and Studio, walked around suburban Chicago, and ended the day with outdoor movies and fireworks. The next day, we visited the University of Chicago, known for the first controlled nuclear energy experiment, before heading to a stand-up comedy show in the evening. It's Tuesday the 17th of July, your second day in D.C., Last 
last night, quite tired after the flight over this morning, we uh, went to the American History Museum, which was very interesting, and then we uh, went to the White House and uh, had a tour, and then we just went to the Holocaust Museum, and now we're at the Lincoln Memorial. We then walked through West Potomac Park, past a few sites, and ended up at the actual Lincoln Memorial, where we stumbled across a military parade. Hey guys! Cameron and I spent this day with friends we had made at the hostel, like Rainer who you just heard, starting at the National Archives and then the National Air and Space Museum, seeing the original Wright Brothers plane and the grounded Apollo lunar module. It's incredible that these are less than 70 years apart. We rounded off the day with drinks at a jazz bar. The fourth day in DC. Started quite late this morning, but started off with the White House. We went to a few art museums with Alex, a friend from the hostel, and simply enjoyed the sun around Washington Monument grounds. The next day, we visited the Supreme Court of the United States and the Museum of the American Indian before heading to a Washington Nationals baseball match, which was a really fun experience, not so much because of the sport, but rather the atmosphere and getting drunk, which led us to sliding down the steps of Lincoln Memorial. 22nd of July and technically your second day in New York, still with Cameron. Yesterday morning, I guess, we came from Washington DC on coach, we were very tired so didn't get up too much, but we saw Twelfth Night at Shakespeare, I met up with Cameron's mum's friend, <laughs> who showed us around a little, and then we went to the Red Lobster this morning in Harlem, had a great time there, and now we're back in Times Square. We're in Grand Central Station, uh, in the Whispering Gallery, so I'm standing across the way from you, and you can hear me from the We spent the rest of the day roaming New York and stumbled across John Wick 3 being filmed near Wall Street. Hey Adrito, it's your last full day in the US. And having spent a lot of time in New York, I ticked off the final few sites, including Chinatown, Little Italy, Washington Square Arch, the Friends Apartment Block, and Chelsea Market. On the final day, we went to the United Nations headquarters and the Nintendo store, flying back to London and heading home on the tube. The US was brilliant. Everyone was incredibly welcoming, I got to live out many of the iconic Hollywood scenes I'd seen on television and in the movies, learnt an imperial ton about US history, and what stood out to me most was the phenomenal architecture, from the Goliath yet unique skyscrapers to the grandiose Greco-Roman inspired buildings. Having graduated two weeks prior, the partially solo month I spent travelling the east coast of the United States represented a time of new opportunities. And, looking back on it now, on its three-year anniversary and a time of travel restrictions, I just felt free. And I suppose that is the US motto. It is literally written in their Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of course we all know that words are cheap and the US has not held these truths to be self-evident, nonetheless they do sound damn cool. See you in the near future, Dorito.